Hi folks, in today's lesson we're going to be addressing how to solve equations and inequalities that are not linear. So to solve any nonlinear equation we need to bring all of the terms to the left and set them equal to zero. If the resulting equation can be factored, set each factor equal to zero. Factor it and then set each factor equal to zero. The resulting answers are called roots or zeros. So this first equation says to solve by hand. So if we're going to solve it by hand, we're going to say that x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. We're going to factor and say that x minus 3 times x plus 2 is 0. We're going to use the zero product property and set each factor equal to 0. And then we're going to use the subtraction property of equality to say that x equals 3 and that x equals negative 2. And if there is no domain restriction, then we just say that both of those answers um, can work. Okay. If the equation cannot be factored, then we let y equals 0 and graph the equation in a calculator. So if you have your TI-84 calculator out, um, that'd be great. So what we're going to do is type in 2x squared plus x minus 5. And um, actually, we could just read what it says to do here. We push y equals, and then we uh, find a well-fitting window and push second calc and so forth. So let's just see what the graph looks like. Mm, interesting. Something buggy going on with mine. So. I'm going to have to um, uh, hit window and actually zoom 6. Zoom 6, uh, see right there, standard. That's going to bring us back to negative 10 to 10 for x's, negative 10 to 10 for y's. Okay, so now that we're there, we can push second calc and we're going to calculate a 0. All right. The TI graphing calculator asks you for a left bound and a right bound. So I knew that the, the answer was between negative 3 and negative 1. So I could have entered those values in. I'll show you that in a minute. So one of these answers is negative 1.851. We're going to do three decimals of precision in calculus. All right, three decimals. All right, and then we're going to go find that next one by second by pushing second, calc, two. All right, so this time I'm going to do this one a little bit differently, a little bit quicker. I know that the answer is between one and two. So my left bound, I'm just going to push the button one, push one. You'll see it show up at the bottom left of the screen. One, and then I'm going to push two. And then I'm actually going to guess two also. That, that makes it even faster. So our second answer is x equals 1.351. Okay, so that's how you solve equations, and that's pretty quick. But we're most interested in solving inequalities. And the reason we're interested in solving in inequalities is because basically you have to use a number line. And using number lines to explain calculus is quite helpful. So we're going to practice number lines um, in solving the inequalities uh, that are nonlinear, and then you're going to see how that relates to uh, using number lines in later videos. Okay, so to solve linear inequalities, we just solve for x. Sometimes you'll have to divide by a negative, and that'll switch the symbol. Okay? So to solve nonlinear equations, we use the number line method. Okay, so we're going to, I, I tell the student, um, actually, I have a little typo there. Bringing, all right, you don't care, do you? Bringing all the terms to one side and graphing the roots on the number line. We pick a value between each root and plug into the equation. So I'll, I'll walk you through all this right quick. So um, what I do is I just imagine uh, and equality okay 
So I'm going to imagine an equality, and if it, it would be x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0, and then I'd get my two roots. The same roots that I got when we solved it by hand up at the top of the, at the, top of the page. So from there, though, I need to draw a number line. And I'm going to have x values here. And I know I didn't name this function f of x, but let's go ahead and name this one f of x. Okay. So the function at negative 2, the function value is 0. And at positive 3, the function value is 0. So all we have to do is then test of, of value to the left of negative 2. I need to test a value between negative 2 and 3. And then I need to test a value greater than 3. OK, so if I substituted in negative 3 into the original equation, it's not so hard to do that on your calculator if you have the quadratic already plugged in. So I'll go ahead and do that. x squared minus x minus 6. And then I'm going to use function notation, y1 at negative 3. If you didn't catch that button stroke, that was explained in another video, but it's alpha f4 will get you to that y1. Anyway, we get 6, which is a positive number. And then I'm going to change that to y1 of 0. And that's negative 6, which is, of course, a negative number. Then I'm going to go back and change that to, say, 4. And that's 6, which is a positive number. Okay, so um, the way we typically use a number line is we say uh, plus, minus, plus. Okay, so our inequality that we were reading, the question says when is the quadratic greater than zero? Well, if the quadratic is greater than zero, or if we're wanting to see when the quadratic is greater than zero, then we're wanting to find out when this function that I named f of x is greater than zero, or, or when it's positive. So this one is going to be positive on two parts, when x is less than negative two, or when x is greater than three. We don't typically use the word and there because it's a disjunction. Um, in other words, um, yeah. It's a disjunction, meaning that um, we can't say that it's less than negative 2 and it's also greater than 3. You'd, you'd have to use the word or there. All right. So on, um, I guess I could explain to you guys, if you already have a calculator out and uh, you're allowed to use a calculator, I, I don't know if you would be in this question, but if you're allowed to see the calculator display, then just hitting trace at negative 2, you see that on the left side, all those values are above the x-axis. So you'd have to say x is less than 2 means that function is greater than 0. And then we can trace on over to positive 3 and see that if we trace to the right, all these y values are positive. So y values are positive when x is greater than 3. All right. So on to the next question. We're going to substitute that, or take that, and put that in the calculator. And then we're going to graph it. Again, what you could do there is, um, is basically just uh, analyze the graph and see where it's positive and negative. But we're going to have to find the zeros. So let's push second calc, zero. Left bound, I'm going to type in negative three. Right bound, I'm going to type in negative one. And then I'm going to guess. So x equals negative 2.125. Second calc, zero left bound. I know that this one is between 1 and 2. 1, enter. 2, enter. Enter. So my next answer is 1.363. We're going to have to do the last one. 
second calc 2. I know that this answer is between 2 and 3. I could say 2 and 4 if I wanted. So 2 and 4. And it's between those two brackets. So I'll push enter. And I'm going to say 2.762. Okay, so three decimals. So now what we have to consider is that your x values at negative 2.125, at 1.363, and at 2.762, all of those will give you the function value equals zero. And just to make it more interesting, let's call this one g. Maybe not more interesting, but um, you know, it's a it's a different name than the last function. So. Um, all we need to do then is just test a point at negative 3. We can test a point between those two, so let's say 0. We will test another point at between 1 and 1.3 and 2.7, so let's just say 2. And then we'll test a point at 3. Okay. Now, actually, instead of saying equals, what I'm going to do is just use an inequality sign. And I'm actually going to stay on the screen. So let's go negative 3, enter. That gives me negative 22, so I know it's less than 0. I'll type in 0, enter, and I get 8, which is greater than 0. The next one, g of 2, is negative 2, which is less than 0. And g of 3 is 2, which is greater than 0. All right, so basically it goes from minus to plus to minus again and then to plus. And you could analyze the graph if you wanted to instead of using the number line, but I really, really, really want to encourage you to start using these number lines as soon as possible in calculus because it is um, one way that people explain themselves. It's a, it's a great teaching strategy as well. So. Anyway, we want the answers, all the answers, to be less than or equal to zero this time. So that would be all of these answers, including this one, okay? And then all of these answers, and including these two, right? So uh, we're going to say x is less than 2.125, I'm sorry, less than or, e or equal to, or, uh, it could be between 1.363 and 2.762. And that, my friends, is the final answer. Okay? All right. Let's pause the video now. Oh, yes. We have one more example that I wanted to tackle. And it says find all the solutions in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So if I'm going from 0 to 2 pi, I should be able to find some kind of answer. Now, there is going to be a calculator tip coming up. All right, so a calculator tip. Um, there is no sine squared button on your calculator. Okay, so um, you're going to go to y equals, type in sine, or sorry, 2, and then sine uh, x. But then you have to square that function, okay? So in the calculator, sine squared x must become um, sine x squared, okay? So you have to be really, um, you, you'll have to remember that one, okay? So plus 3 sine x, sine x, and then minus 2. We'll look at the graph. And as we wait on the calculator, I'm going to highlight this. It says that we only need the answers between 0 and 2 pi. So if we only need those answers, maybe I'll change my window 
and I want to go from 0 so let's just say negative 0.5 from 0 to 2 pi. Well, a number bigger than 2 pi, just slightly bigger than 2 pi. 2 pi plus maybe a half, okay? I think the y equals, I think that that was fine. So, um, well, it was fine for me. So anyway, I'm just going to graph that. So now I can see all of the possible answers, and I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm outside of that domain. So it looks like we only have two answers. Those two answers uh, can be found by doing the same button sequence. Second, calc, zero. Left bound, let's see, this first one is between, hmm, let me see, that doesn't look like one, is that one? Okay. Um, it is 1. So it's actually between 0 and 1, isn't it? So second count 0. It's between 0 and 1. So those are my left bound and right bound. And I write down the answer. x is equal to 0.524. x equals 0.524. Of course, that's when a function, let's call this function h equals 0 at x equals this value. Okay, I'll just call this function h. Okay, next we will do second, calc 2. And we, I know that the zero is between, it looks like 2 and 3. So 2, enter, 3, enter, enter. And this gives me 2.618. 2.618. Draw your number line x values are on the bottom of the number line the h values are on the top of the number line and at this point you're getting a little bit quicker with figuring this kind of stuff out so maybe we don't write all the work underneath maybe we just just kind of look at the graph or maybe we go to zero push enter see that it's negative and we just write the negative sign there between 0.5 and 2 the number might be 1 and 1 is a positive number and past 2 so I need to type in something like x equals 3 and that gives me another negative all right so Pause that video and see if you can write the answers for all the answers that are less than zero. So less than zero, it would be, uh, the, all the solutions for this problem would be x is less than 0.524 or x is greater than 2.618. All right? Okay, so that is how you solve all in equation, uh, I'm sorry, equalities and equations and inequalities that are non-linear, okay? So if you have any questions, make sure you shoot them to me. Thanks a lot. Bye.